moving into June, and we've got patchy cirrus up there and cumulus, very characteristic sky for this time of year. And on the satellite picture, here's how it looks. You can see that cirrus moving overhead. Those are the patches right there that we saw in the opening clip. And as we look off to the west, you can see anvils out there. So there's no doubt where that cirrus is coming from. Also on the satellite loop here in Texas, you can see the cold air advection bringing in cumulus from the northwest. So a little push of cold air coming into the state, a little bit of convective cloud out there, and you've got yourself a afternoon in June. There's a more zoomed out presentation. Lots of convective cells out there, especially in West Texas and New Mexico. And you can see those anvils streaming off towards the south-southwest. The cells in Texas, the anvils are streaming to the northeast. And that difference in the upper level wind field indicates the location of a trough in the mid and upper levels, probably centered on the central plains. And if you don't believe me, there's the heights and vorticity chart showing that trough centered in eastern Kansas and the flow kind of going around that trough off to the southwest. We've got this cutoff low south of Arizona. So that's going to be a wild card to contend with as we go into the rest of the week. And so you don't have to wait around to see the results. Let's bring this up to Thursday and then Friday. And you can see that cutoff low enters West Texas. So with the height falls, the cold air aloft, we should see some destabilization as that upper level low crosses the state. So it looks like more rain on the way, and that'll probably be moving up into the Midwest in about several days. The surface map showing a bit of a paradoxical picture down to the south, some very comfortable temperatures. Looks like a lot of upper 70s and lower 80s. But if we take a look to the north, that's where the heat is. At this hour, mid to late afternoon, we've got 88 up there in Montana, 86 up there northwest of Minot. And we're expecting this heat to stretch out over Michigan, Minnesota, and Wisconsin going into the weekend. And records will likely be broken. Also, more heat up there near James Bay, up there in Canada. Yeah, we do cover Canada. 81 at Moosonee, and a lot of 80s up there in Saskatchewan. So, yeah, plenty of heat. And if we look up in Washington, 99 up there near Pendleton, and I'm not sure what station that is, Moses Lake, I think. And that's about the hottest I'm seeing in that region. And then in the desert southwest, those temperatures also coming up. We've got 104 there in Vegas, 104 in Phoenix, and 106 all the way from Blythe up towards Barstow. And then in the San Joaquin Valley, yep, they've got the heat too. I can see 101 there at Fresno, 86 at Sacramento, but going to the north part of the valley, 98 up there near Red Bluff. So it kind of looks like the place to be is in the southern U.S. So we've got not only the mild temperatures, but also plenty of rain associated with this stagnating front and the somewhat depressed heights. Here's the precipitation anomaly for May 3rd until June 2nd. So this covers most of May here. Any of the blue and purple values, that's going to be significantly above rainfall. And any of the blue stuff that you see right here, that's going to be double the typical May rainfall. And we can see that much of Texas has pretty much been like that. East of San Antonio to Houston, up to Fort Worth, Dallas, and up to Lubbock. Only a few areas checking in with below normal precipitation. So we're looking at El Paso, some of the hill country, and Oklahoma being behind on that precip. 
And here's how it looks across the country for the entire year up to the current date. A lot of the country actually kind of dry. New England, the Northern Plains, and of course, the Western U.S. running behind normal. But as far as the rest of the country down south, running pretty close to average, but quite a bit high from Houston up to Lubbock, Amarillo, and especially around the Denver area. And there's the National Drought Monitor. A lot of problems out west. We definitely don't like to see that going into summer, but that is the situation that we have. The drought starting from around Hobbs, Wink, the Texas Big Bend, all the way back to Salt Lake City, Phoenix, Tucson, and right up through the San Joaquin Valley into the Cascades and northern Nevada. And then another drought area starting up in North Dakota, northeastern Montana, and that probably extends up into the Canadian prairies. So that situation out west, that is an ominous development, and that suggests that we're going to be dealing with a lot of fire problems going into late summer. And we had that last year. I'm sure a lot of you remember the wildfires there in California. Looks like this is probably round two. Anyway, the water vapor imagery for today showing that low pressure system there in eastern Kansas, but we also see an anticyclonic flow in the western U.S. There it is. That points out the location of an upper level high, or at least an upper level ridge, centered somewhere in the Great Basin region. Down to the south, pretty easy to see where the tropical moisture is. That's going to cover this entire region from New Mexico, where they certainly need the rain, up through Arkansas, the lower Mississippi River Valley, and up into the Carolinas. And there's another way to see the presentation. The precipitable water chart. This is enormously useful this time of year. We see the one and a half inch precipitable water amounts all the way from South Texas, all the way up into Indiana and down through Alabama. Surrounding that, a one inch amount, which goes from the Texas Panhandle over to Chicago, Detroit, over to New Jersey and back through the Appalachians. So with that trough across the central U.S., that means a lot of the moisture will advect into the eastern part of the country. And as we run the charts forward, you can see that happening there. So the chances of rain are going to go up in the eastern U.S. And it looks like a little bit of cold air kind of coming right in behind that plume of moisture. That's a high right there indicated by the isobar pattern. And on the other side, we're going to be advecting some of that moisture into Texas from the Gulf. So Texas will be in that rainy pattern. We know that that upper level low is going to make its move around the weekend and rain chances should go up around that time. And you can see that cyclonic turning of the wind flow right there. Some indication of a little S shape. That's that comic cloud uh, presentation that you tend to see with these upper level lows and that will get carried up into the Mississippi River Valley. And then after the weekend, more of that moisture coming up the Mississippi River Valley, widespread two inch amounts in Arkansas, Texas and Louisiana, and the one and a half inch plume going all the way up to the Great Lakes. So it looks like a lot of areas in the central and eastern U.S. having a pretty decent chance of rain during the first half of June. So I'm not going to worry too much about the pressure patterns. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. Bermuda High in the southeastern U.S., troughing in the central U.S. So one interesting tool to use is the total accumulated QPF, and we can see exactly who's going to get rain. Near the nose of that tropical moisture, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, looking at quite a bit of rain over the next 24 hours and more rain developing down there in Texas. And then as more of that moisture spreads and that low pulls out of the northern part of Mexico, a lot more rain developing there in Texas. And going into early next week, you can see those plumes spreading up into Alabama, Mississippi, Arkansas, 
This yellow down here in Texas indicates four inch amounts, maybe up to six inches in some localized areas. And then about a week from now, it looks like pretty much everybody has gotten a little bit of rain, except for South Dakota, western Nebraska, and of course, hate to say it, the southwestern U.S. And we can just go ahead and run this to the end and see what shows up. Pretty much the uh, same deal there, Texas still hanging on to those yellows. So I think it's dried out a little bit right there, but we see a lot of that rain spreading into the north central U.S. and the east coast over the next couple of weeks. Back on Monday, I was telling some of the supporters what a drought we've had in terms of severe weather. I mean, we have had some tornadoes here and there. You can see the 27th, 28th of April had a few scattered ones. May 2nd, outbreak there in Mississippi. But you can see as we move forward through May, we just don't plant any tornadoes in Oklahoma or Kansas. Looks like a few of them around the 24th and the 26th. So, I mean, it's not been a total drought, but you can see that over the past couple of days, just nothing really at all. So this would be quite challenging if you were chasing. You're pretty much confined to the periphery of the Great Plains, the southeastern U.S. and the northern plains, but just not really much of anything in that box right there. So I guess maybe that tells us we've probably escaped disaster. So at least there is that one positive aspect there, but uh, but it has been kind of an anomalous year. We've had a distinct lack of uh, capping, for one. It's also been much cooler than usual. And we've had trouble building up the supply of moisture on the Great Plains because of all the constant erosion from all these MCSs and northerly flow. So I don't know if that's it for spring, but you know, it is getting to be about June. And pretty soon we're going to have to look out for the possibility of hurricanes in the Gulf and the eastern US. That's coming up in probably as early as a month to a month and a half. Typically, that starts out around August, but things have been trending a little bit early. We've had our first named storms already. So anyway, that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. I hope you all enjoyed it. We'll be back again for tomorrow's Thursday edition. Take care and we will see you then. Bye-bye.